All right. Well, um, happy Monday. Let's uh, let's take a look. Uh, so this is kind of a, a long notebook. We'll see um, how far we get into it. Um, Want to uh, introduce kind of classes and object-oriented programming. Uh, so Python is very much an object-oriented uh, language, and we've we've seen a lot of kind of the object-oriented nature of different things that we do in Python. So, uh, for example, you've been working with lists and tuples and dictionaries, and all of those data types, those objects, come with methods. So you have things like list.append or um, you know, list.sort, um, you know, things, things like that. Um, uh, you know, same with the, uh, the data frames and your NumPy arrays, they all kind of come with their, you know, dot something method that you can, uh, you can do. And so, um, you know, in some cases, it is handy to create your own object with um, its own methods and, uh, and to be able to kind of customize certain things just as you um, have to work with, uh, with certain kinds of data or certain kinds of situations. And then sometimes you'll read someone else's code and so maybe you yourself aren't implementing an object but as you read someone else's code you know they, they have implemented objects and it's going to be important to be able to just kind of at least read and under, be able to understand the, uh, the code that they've written. Okay, so, um, so what we'll do is we will define a new kind of object type, okay? And so um, this is done using the keyword class. So you just say class and then you give it a name. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an object called a point object, and uh, and I'm just following the examples in our um, our textbook. And the point object is going to be used to represent uh, a point in two dimensional space uh, as an x y Cartesian coordinate. Okay, and so um, so I said you know if we wanted to kind of represent points in Python, um, there's a few ways we could do this. Uh, we could store the coordinates separately in two variables, an x variable, a y variable. We could store the coordinates as uh, elements in a list or a tuple, or we can create a new type of object, a new class, um, as something that represents points, okay? Um, and so, you know, creating a class a new type is a little bit more complicated, and, you know, perhaps in this example it's a little, a little bit overkill, um, but there's probably lots of other situations where you can think of uh, a class where it would be handy to have. Okay, and so again, to uh, to do this, um, we just use the keyword class, and then um, and then we give the name of the class that we're going to do. Now, convention is when you define a new class, it's going to uh, start with a capital letter. There's not a requirement that says you have to do it that way, but that's convention, um, and that will just kind of help make it easier for you other people to read your code. And, um, and basically, what you put inside uh, the class, you can kind of put whatever you want in there. Uh, and so right now, we're not going to put anything kind of <laughs> important in there. But what we will do is we will um, just put in uh, what we call a doc string, um, basically a little bit of documentation. Um, and so like if you ask help on this thing, it's going to pull, pull this um, information up. And, uh, and the doc string is done by having a triple, triple quote opening, okay, and then you put it in whatever text you want. And so right now our point doesn't really have anything defined uh, as far as uh, what it goes, okay? So here we've created this class point. There's nothing, only a doc string header to, um, to do it in there. And so when you um, ask what is point, okay, and you say print, it's going to just say this is a this is a new class object, okay? And it says class uh, double under main dot point, okay? That's its full name, and uh, and that just means it belongs to kind of the top level, uh, I guess, environment of uh, double underscore main, which is kind of uh, what gets loaded here, all right? 
Um, and this, this class point, um, the way we kind of call it looks a lot like a function, okay? So I would do point parentheses, and when you do this, it creates an object that belongs to this class, okay? So you can kind of think of this uh, class as kind of a, a factory where the, uh, the purpose of this factory is to create objects. And so here I'm going to create a, an object, a point object, and we're going to assign it the name blank. And so, um, so that's all I do. And so now when I ask blank, it's going to say blank is a point object, okay? And it's an instance of the point object, all right? So there's, so the difference between print point, which is, this is the point class, and this is an instance of a point class, and it gives you the memory location. So, you know, I could create another instance of point, and it will say, you know, this is another instance of point. So just like you can have, you know, you could create a list, and you can create another list, and these are all list objects, but they're different list objects, right? Um, and so once you have an object, you can do stuff to it, okay? And so one thing is you can um, add attributes to this object. So remember, when I define this class, there's nothing in it. But I can say, all right, we created an instance of this uh, point class object, and we call it blank. And here I'm going to use the dot notation to say I want to create an attribute. Uh, dot x. So inside the blank object, we're going to do blank dot x, and I'm going to give it the value 3.0, floating point value 3, and uh, blank dot y, and we're going to give it the value 4, okay? So this is kind of just like taking, um, you know, selecting a variable or selecting a value. You know, uh, we had similar notation from like when we loaded the math module, we did math dot pi, and that has the value, you know, 3.14159. Um, and uh, and here we have blank dot x blank dot y, and we just we're just assigning values to these these attributes, and these are basically creating new attributes to this blank object kind of on the fly, and I can retrieve them. I can say blank dot y and says, yeah, the attribute you created, uh, it has the value four. Okay, um, we can also kind of take this. Uh, this attribute blank dot x, I can assign it to a value x that exists in kind of the global environment. No, no problem there. Okay, so now x has the value three point zero, and but these are these are unrelated to each other. Okay, all we did was we just created a new object called x that takes on the value blank dot x, but they're not they're not linked. So I can say here, here's x x is three point zero. I can change the value of blank dot x to say 5.0, and the value x at you know top level main is uh, is not affected by that change. These are just kind of different kinds of things. Um, we can use those attributes uh, as part of any kind of um, expression. So here I can say here here's a string, and inside the string I, I have curly brace placeholders. And um, and so I can take that string object and I can do dot format and I can insert in kind of uh, you know in this case some values that I want to put in here. So I'm going to say um, you know I want to print out parentheses placeholder comma placeholder closing parentheses. And so here it's going to print out basically uh, the value inside x and the value inside y. So we have five and four because. I change blank.x to be five inside uh, our object, and uh, and that's what we have here. Okay. Um, furthermore, we could define another function called print dot print underscore point, and this function is going to take in some object p, uh, in our case, which will be uh, a point object, and then we can say, hey, I want you to print this out and do format p.x, p.y. And so now I can take our blank object and I can call print on it and it prints out uh, exactly what I asked, asked for it to do. Okay, so this is just kind of uh, all we've done so far 
is defined an empty class called point. There's nothing inside the definition of point. Um, but then, and we created a an instance of that point class object, and then I just added attributes all kind of on the fly in this ad hoc manner um, without formal definitions or anything. All right, so um, so we'll start there. Let me go ahead and give you your first view quiz answer. Uh, question one is C. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is we want to um, create a new class, and this is uh, going to be a class to represent rectangles. And so um, how can we represent a rectangle? And there's a couple ways we could do this. One is we could specify one corner of the rectangle and then a, a width and a height. Okay, or we could specify two opposing corners, uh, or another option is you could specify the center and have a length and uh, width or something like that. Um, but what we'll do is we'll uh, just for this example, and again, any any example would have been any method would have been fine. But just so we know what we're doing is we're going to represent a rectangle, which is going to have a width, a height, and then a point that defines the corner. Okay. So here we're going to do class rectangle, and again, right now our rectangle class is totally empty. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll have better definitions when we uh, as we f go further along. But here we're going to just start off with something totally blank, okay, or totally empty. Uh, class rectangle, and what we'll do is we'll just kind of add attributes, kind of um, in this ad hoc uh, manner. So I'm going to define an instance of the rectangle. I'm going to say create an instance of the rectangle. We're going to call this box. And then I'm going to add attributes. We're going to say the width of the box is 100. The height of the box is 200. And again, these are just attributes that I'm making up that aren't, this isn't, you know, if I have a misspelling, then the misspelling would just go into, my phone's exploding about the I-10 freeway. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, if I had a misspelling, that misspelling would go into this thing just because uh, right now we're just kind of adding things on the fly. And then, um, but what I'm going to also do is I'm going to, because I have this definition of a point class, even though the point class is currently totally empty, we're going to uh, create box.corner. So I'm going to create as an attribute of this box instance, this instance of the rectangle. Um, we're going to create uh, uh, as the dot corner, we're going to create an instance of the point class object. And within the point class object there, we're going to say the corner is at the origin, 0, 0. So that's going to be found by doing box.corner.x, box.corner.y. Okay? So we're using kind of the, uh, the class notation, using the dot notation to say within this instance, there's an attribute. And that attribute itself can be an object with its own attributes. So I've got box.corner.x, box.corner.y, right? So it's kind of this, this hierarchy of objects inside of other objects, all right? Is that okay as far as setting this up? All right, and then, um, so we've got that. And so with that, we can say, all right, well, let's, um, let's see if we can run some functions with it. So here's a function that's going to be called find center. And here we're going to take um, this object or this function find centers. The input is going to be a rectangle object. So we can say we're going to put in, say, box here. And then we're going to, uh, what it will return is it's going to return P. P is going to be a point class object. And we're looking for the center. And so we're going to take the corner of that rectangle, we're going to take the x coordinate and we're going to add the width divided by 2 and then we're going to take the uh, the location of the y object and we're going to take the height and divide it by 2 and add that to it. So that will give us where the center of our rectangle is located. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so here let's just keep in mind, so where, where is the center of this rectangle if our origin, if our one corner, the lower left corner is at zero, zero, and it has a width and height, width of 100 and a height of 200, so it's kind of this tall rectangle. The center is going to be at what? 50, 100, right? 
So let's just see if, make sure uh, this works, right? So uh, center, uh, <laughs> when we ask, we're gonna say, find the center of the box, okay? And, uh, and right now center is going to be a, an instance of whatever this object uh, of this function returns, which right now is a point class object. And when you just ask what is center, it's just gonna say, oh, it's a point class object at this memory location. So if we wanna find kind of the, uh, what it looks like, we can run the function print dot point or print underscore point and it does that, or we could, you know, we could ask, you know, what is centered, center dot x, uh, and it says, oh, yeah, it's 50.0, but we, we have this function print, print underscore p, which uh, returns um, or prints out kind of the coordinates there. Okay, now objects themselves are mutable, which means, um, you know, once you create something, you can also add attributes and you can modify those attributes. So, um, so here I've got currently my box width is say 100 and I can say you know I want the width of my box to be uh, 50 wider uh, and I want my height to be even taller okay so now um, now my box has a width of 150 and my height is going to be 300 now um, you can do things like um, create functions that will actually modify the object themselves so here is a function called grow rectangle, and what grow rectangle will do is, as for its arguments, it's going to take an object, and it's going to take two additional arguments, basically the delta on the width and a delta on the height, and th that will modify the object itself. Yeah, question? Well, the bottom of this function is the opposite of the aspect of the rectangle with dot. So, so you, you want to create a method within the rectangle thing? Yeah. Yes. And we will get to that. So we will, we will talk about, so right now we're just kind of defining objects in kind of the top level global thing. Um, and then later on we will talk about defining functions inside the object definition and those will be like the rectangle dot, so on and so forth. Uh, so that is coming up. That's coming up, okay? Um, but yeah, so right now we're just creating a new function at the top level. This is kind of in the main, do, under, double under main, or, or we can think of this as a global environment. And it's going to accept a rectangle object. It's going to add a delta width. And so notice, does this function return anything? There's no return, okay? There's no return. But the function does stuff. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that rectangle and it's going to take the width attribute and it's going to add the delta width, right? Um, I, I don't know if I formally went over the plus equals notation, but this is basically the same thing as rectangle width equals rectangle width plus this number delta width, okay? So that's, that's the plus equals. It's just kind of like add this thing to itself and save it, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing with height. So right now our box width is 150 and 300, and I'm gonna do grow rectangle um, box 50, 100. And that runs, okay? And again, this grow rectangle itself doesn't return anything. So when you run it, it doesn't look like anything happened. But indeed, box.width is now 200, 400, okay? And so you have to be kind of, you have to be a little bit careful when you run some of these functions that return, uh, modify objects is if, you, if you're not careful, like if I accidentally ran this cell again, then my box will be 250, four, uh, 500. And if I, you know, run it again or something, right? So you have to really pay attention, and you know, especially in something like a Jupyter notebook, where you can like run a cell, and all, and the only thing that indicates that you ran the cell again is like this changes from a twenty six to a twenty eight or whatever. Um, you know, you might be like, how did I get this? And unless you remember, like, oh, I ran that cell again, like, there's no kind of like thing for you to trace back like exactly what happened, at least not in a simple way. Um, okay, so anyway, um, just like a, a lot of the other um, objects that we have, you know, we, we can create uh, copies of, of these objects, okay? So, um, so here, uh, we'll use the copy module. So right now, we're going to define P1, empty point, 
a new instance of the point class object. And again, our point class definition has nothing going on in it. Okay, there's nothing going on. So I'm going to just, again, on the fly, assign attributes x and y, 3 and 4. I'm going to create a copy of this. Okay, so I'm going to import the copy module, and we're going to do copy.copy .copy of p1, and this will create p2. Okay, so what we have is p1 is, uh, contains the attributes 3 and 4, or x is 3 and y is 4, and then p2 is a copy of p1, which also has um, 3 and 4. Now we can ask, are these two things equal to each other? Or is one equal to the, is one the other? And they are not, okay? This is function is basically asking, is this thing basically the same object in, in memory, okay? So even though they have the same values, P1 has X equal to three and P, uh, P2 has X equal to three, they are not the same instance of the object, right? It's basically, it's like, if you ask, what is P1? P1 is uh, an instance of the point class object at this memory location. P2 is an instance of this uh, object at, at this memory location, right? It's kind of like having you know two people with the same name, right? You could have a, uh, a John Smith, right? And another person named John Smith, right? You can have two people named John Smith. They are not the same person. They happen to have the same name, okay? But they're not the same person. Now, John Smith might go by uh, a nickname. Well, like maybe the first instance of John Smith goes by a nickname, maybe Jack, right? And he goes by, oh, you can call me Jack. And then we can ask, is Jack the same person as John Smith number one? And we go, oh yeah, yeah, that's the same person, right? Because those are just basically two names pointing to the same person versus we here we have like the same name, but they're actually two different, uh, two different people. And, and that's kind of what you have to think of. Here we have P1 happens to have the values 3, 4. P2 happens to have the values 3, 4, but they're, they're different, they're different, okay? One, one was technically a copy of the other, but again, like once you go through that cloning machine, now you have like two individual people that have like separate lives, right? It's kind of, um, I don't know if this is a spoiler. Did you guys watch The Prestige? Oh, okay, all right, never mind. All right, it's a great movie. Um, okay, shallow copies and deep copies. Um, so we talked about shallow copies and deep copies earlier. Um, it, it becomes a, a bigger deal when you have uh, objects, especially if you have objects nested inside other objects and things like that. Okay, so here I've got... Um, we have an object called box, and currently box.width and box.height is 200 and 400, and the corner, and uh, there's a corner inside the box, right? And right now our box corner and box um, is located, our x and y and box corner is zero, zero. So here I'm gonna create a copy of the box. Now, so box two is a copy of a box, and so we have these two boxes, and they're copies of each other, but they are separate objects. So if I say is box two the same as box one, that is false, right? They're gonna have different, they are different objects. However, because this is, the copy is gonna be a shallow copy, within box, within the box, we say there's a corner, and the corner is zero, zero. In box two, its corner is the same, is referencing the same object here, okay? <laughs> I don't know if these make sense, right? So we've got this, we have this corner, okay? And then we have, you know, we have a box. I guess I should, you know, it's, it looks like this. And then I created another copy of the box, okay? Um, and so they look similar, but I have basically I had a dotted line box and then solid line box. Those are separate things. However, this object that defines the corner is the same object. So I don't know if there's like a... We have two John Smiths, and John Smith 
owns a car but shares it with the other Jonesmiths. So it's like confusing. Or like maybe they're roommates and they have, share an apartment, right? So we say, okay, if, so if you have, let, yeah, th- let's say there's an apartment and there's two people that live there and they both happen to be named John Smith, right? So we can say, is John Smith the same as the other John Smith? No, they are separate people. Is the home of John Smith one the same as the home of John Smith two? Because they're sharing that same apartment, the answer there would be yes. And that's kind of what we have here. Is box cor- box dot corner is that the same as box two dot corner? The answer is yes. Okay. Um, we ask what is the the full name of box two dot corner, and it's going to give us this memory location. What is the full name of box dot corner, and it's the exact same memory location. They are we're talking about the same exact location. Okay. And that's that's what happens when you do a shallow copy. Any objects inside the other objects. You just create reference uh, copies of that reference, not an not an actual copy. Okay. When we do um, box dot corner dot x equal one, all right. If I reassign and I say I want to move this over, okay. The uh, box dot corner dot x becomes one, and box two dot corner dot x also becomes one because we're modifying like it. They share the same thing, right? So if you added a TV to apartment to the apartment, both John Smith and the other John Smith, they both get a gain a TV at their location. Okay. Um, but the uh, the height values, those attributes are separate. And so if I change the height of box to 200, box dot height becomes 200 and box two height dot height becomes 400, right? So if, if, if John Smith decide if the first John Smith decides to change his name to you know, I don't know, uh, John, John Johnson or whatever. Okay, then um, that's a separate, you know, that that's a separate person, and so you know those attributes uh, don't change. Okay. On the other hand, if you wanted to do a deep copy, okay, this will create a clone, but also create <coughs> clones of everything else inside. So that corner uh, will be some will be a different corner. Okay. So here I say box three is a cop deep copy of the box. So box three is not the box. And then if we ask, is the corner in box three the same as the corner in the box? That, that answer is false. Okay, now we've created a, a new point with an, you know, um, currently is a copy, but it's a, it's a new point object. Yes, question. What's the distinction of having this Python determine So, so the corner, the the difference between um, the height attribute and the corner attribute is that the corner attribute is assigned to another object. So, um, so here we have you know box box dot height. This is just this is an attribute we're we're giving it you know the value two hundred. Okay. Uh, and if I do box dot corner, this is an uh, instance of basically point. Okay, so it's an instance of point, and so this itself is an object. And so when you create copies, when you create a copy of box, it's going to copy the attributes. Okay. Um, but this attribute references a, an object, and so that object, it just copies a reference to the object. It's not going to create a copy of the object itself, unless you do a deep copy. Okay? Then a deep copy is going to create a new instance of this point. Okay? But the shallow copy, this dot corner attribute points to this, ref, uh, references this object, and then the copy also points to the same same thing. Hmm? The height is just a, is just a number. It's just a number. It's not it's not its own separate object here. It it feels weird, and I, I don't have I don't have a better answer to this other than the more you use it, the more it'll make sense, and you'll get used to it. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, that's like, it's not a satisfying answer, 
Um, but it is, yeah, you've got, yeah, again, as you use it more, it'll, it'll, it'll I think it'll start clicking and start making more sense as far as how um, just values get co uh, get copied um, and then references to, to other objects get copied, but they're going to be pointing to the same, same thing. Okay, so um, here, let's just try out uh, another thing. So here's, uh, we're going to create a, a new class called time. And again, right now all of our things are totally just empty class definition. We'll, we'll come up with better class definitions later, don't worry. Okay, but right now uh, we're just creating an empty definition. We're going to have the attributes time.hour, time.minute, time.second. And again, the way we're doing this is um, very ad hoc. If you have a misspelling, the misspelling just sticks. Um, and so we're going to, and we're going to create an object called print time. And this will kind of force that we're going to have two, two digits appear and we're going to have uh, 115930 um, will uh, appear that way. Okay. And so if I, if I change like time second, um, this zero uh, greater than 2D, that, that's going to force two digits to appear even if there's only kind of like one, uh, one digit here. Okay. Um, here we're going to try to build up a function that um, is going to kind of take two times and add them together. And uh, in our textbook, this think Python says, you know, there's there's a couple of ways to think about building up a function. Okay, one is prototype and patch, which says, you know, start some off with a simple thing, try doing a function, and uh, and you do it. Keep trying out different like use cases, and when you realize, okay, um, the function isn't going to handle this use case or this particular case very well then you modify it, you patch the function to kind of handle these kinds of, uh, these edge cases, All right? So that's one plan. Uh, and then uh, it will, we'll show another approach where we kind of think about the whole problem ahead of time and we try to figure out what, what's an efficient way to, to handle that, okay? Um, we have um, also, there's, we want to distinguish between pure functions and modifier, okay? A pure function takes in an input, doesn't modify any of the inputs going in, and it just returns a new object, okay, or a new value or something like that. Um, if you're coming from R, and I think everybody took stats 20 and you, you learned about R, pretty much everything in R is a pure function. Uh, things go in, and then it outputs something else, right? And um, only if you're doing like R6 or reference class objects do like the arguments that go into a function actually change. But uh, but that's almost never the case in regular day-to-day -day R programming. You put in an argument and the thing that you put in doesn't get modified. It always outputs a new thing and so you always have to kind of like capture that output. Um, that's a pure function. Uh, whereas a modifier will take in an argument and will actually change the uh, the values in that thing. Okay, so um, so anyway, we're going to just try to do a, a simple function where we're going to take two times, and we want to like add time one time to an, to another. So um, so the way we're going to do this is this will take two time objects, a t1 and a t2, and we're going to return uh, the sum of these two objects. So we're going to say um, sum is going to be a new time object. And sum.hour is going to be hour of time one plus hour of time two. Sum.minute is going to be t1 minute plus t2 minute. Sum.second, t1 second, t2 second, right? So, um, so we can try that out. We can say, all right, let's start off with 945 and 135. And let's try adding these two things together and see what happens. So if we have start, duration, our done is going to be, um, we're going to take start, we're going to add the duration, and we're going to print out what happens. And it says, if you start at 9.45 and it lasts an hour 35, you're gonna finish at 10.80, okay? And then go, oh, okay, that 10 hours and 80 minutes, that we need to change that to 11.20, right? So, um, 
So what are we going to do? Well, we'll patch our function and we'll say we're going to take, you know, basically copy our current function and we're going to say, okay, if the uh, number of seconds or number of minutes is over 60, then what we'll do is we'll increment. Um, if the number of seconds is over 60, we'll increment the minutes by one. And if the number of minutes is over 60, we'll increment the number of hours by one and we'll subtract off 60 from the minutes or hours, okay? So we'll do that and we can say, all right, if I do 9.45 plus an hour 35, we end up at 11.20. And we go, okay, that's great, that's great, okay? Um, here is a, this uh, add time as a pure function takes in two, two objects, returns a new object, okay? Increment is a modifier. It takes in an object and it modifies the object. So here we're going to just say um, take in our time and then let's uh, increment the number of seconds. So we're going to increment by a number of seconds and what we're going to do is we're going to add seconds to time.second and if that causes seconds to go over 60 then we'll subtract off 60 and increment the minutes by one. And then if that causes the minutes to go over 60, we'll increment the minutes, subtract off 60, or increment the hour and subtract off 60 from the minutes. Okay, so let's try this out. Um, we're gonna start off at 9.45. Let's increment by 90 seconds, okay? So what we wanna see is if I do 9.45 plus 90 seconds, what do I expect? 9.46 and 30 seconds, right? And, uh, and that seems to have worked, okay? All right, and then let's say, okay, let's increment by 185 seconds. Okay, 185 seconds is three minutes, five seconds. So um, if I'm at three minutes and five seconds to 946, I should end up at 949 and 35 seconds. Okay, um, and, but I get 947 and 155 seconds. Okay, so this, so it's not quite working here. So we got to kind of further patch this, okay? So what we'll do is we'll take time in seconds and then um, we'll div mod. So we'll take the number of seconds and do um, modular division. So that, and that will give us a whole number for the number of minutes and then the remainder will be the number of seconds. And we'll also do the same thing with minutes and uh, and 60, and so we'll do um, div mod minutes. We'll take you know whatever here our minutes are, and then we'll do div mod 60 in case uh, we have a huge number of minutes, right? And then that will increment the number of hours and minutes, okay? And um, and then uh, once we have that, we will do increment our seconds, increment our minutes, increment our hours, and after doing that, if that increments by <laughs> greater than 60 then we will uh, add one to the minute, and if the minutes go over 60, then we'll add one to the hour. Okay, so we have to kind of further modify all of these things. And so this is um, this is the prototype and patch method, and it's a, I think it's a good approach, um, useful for a lot of kind of problems. Uh, when you do this kind of method, though, you often have, want to try out a bunch of different test cases. And whenever you try out a test case, it's very important to have in mind what you expect the answer to be, and then you can check if the answer that you're getting from the program matches the answer that you're expecting, right? So this is, this is an important part of any kind of program development, you know, whether it's just something simple in Python or like game development, okay? Um, there's, there's a whole kind of Q&A, uh, quality assurance QA process where it's like, this is what we're expecting to happen. Let's try out these different conditions and see if what we expect to happen actually happens. Okay, so here we're gonna go ahead and try this out. We're gonna start off at 9.45. We'll try incrementing it by 185 seconds. What do we expect to happen? 185 seconds being three minutes, five seconds. We expect this to end up at 9.48 and five seconds. And that's what we get, great. Okay, let's try adding um, 4,800 seconds. 4,800 seconds is one hour and 20 minutes. Okay, so if I add one hour and 20 minutes to 9.48, that should take us to uh, 11.08 and five seconds. 
and that's what we're hoping to see. Oh, and that's what we get. So, so so far it seems to be working. Um, you know, we could run more test cases, but so far um, this seems to have done the trick in terms of like you give it a big number of seconds, figures out the minutes and the hours and things like that, and it adds it accordingly. Okay. Um, anything um, that we can do with a modifier here, we can also do with a pure function. Um, one thing, so modifiers are convenient, but one thing is that they do become difficult to debug, um, which again, if I accidentally ran this again, now my test time is 12.28.05, and it's hard to know, like, how did we go from here to here, right? And, and that was just because I accidentally like ran this particular cell more than once, okay? And we, we've modified it, and it's kind of, you don't really have a trace back here, um, just because you know cell 80, input 80 and output 80 is like got overwritten inside the uh, the Jupyter um, Jupyter output there. Yeah. So just to recap for uh, the pure function t1 and t2 t2 didn't get modified. Right. But in the modifier function, the increment, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, time didn't get modified. Yeah, that time object gets modified. Yes. So modifiers take objects and modify them. Pure functions take in arguments and just return new things. And it doesn't touch anything inside the, uh, the arguments coming in. Um, and so depending on, you know, depending on where you work, your uh, workplace might have different rules regarding um, how programming should be done. And some places will just say no <laughs> modifiers at all, um, which may um, you know that that's a constraint that makes make things a, a little bit more more work, but uh, but also easier to debug when you when you run into uh, issues. All right, um, so we had the prototype and patch thing, um, and basically, as you encounter different kinds of errors, you say like, okay, the, we got to fix it to handle this this particular scenario. Um, planning, on the other hand says, all right, well, let's think of, uh, you know, what's a good strategy for this, okay? And um, and so here we're going to, um, the, uh, the strategy here is we're going to take a time, convert the time into the number of seconds from midnight, and then we will... Um, uh, have another function that takes the number of seconds from midnight and converts it back to a time. And therefore, um, we can always just kind of deal with seconds, work with seconds, because we can add seconds very kind of easily uh, without having to worry about all of this. Um, you know, if I go over 60, then I have to increment this and that. Um, and so here we have kind of one to go from the current time into the number of seconds. And then we have an, another function that will go from the number of seconds, do our div mod stuff, and return a time. So here, um, I can do um, 945, and we can say, all right, let's turn that into um, the number of seconds, all right, time to integer, that's 35,100 seconds. And then I can say, all right, integer to time will take 35,100 seconds, convert that back to a time, and we get 9.45. All right, and so now my add time function, which is a, a pure function, is very simple. I just take my two, I take a time, t1, convert it to an integer. I take my second time, t2, convert that to an integer. Those are both in seconds. I can just add them together, and then whatever that sum is, I just return back, um, back into integer time. So I can do, um, say, uh, so let's see. If I do um, my test time, oops, all right, let's do uh, print time. Print time, test time. Okay, we get 945, and then I can say, all right, well, let's, um, Uh, 
Uh, let's do add time. Add time, and we'll do test time and test time. Okay, and then we turn this, so we'll do print, print time on this thing, print time on this, and so we can say, okay, if I do 945, 945, it's going to give give me back 1930. Okay, it's fine. Um, and so, okay, um, we are out of time, so we are going to continue this on uh, Wednesday, and we will look at methods, where now we're going to start um, adding the function definitions to the class definition itself. Um, but that will come, that's next lecture. All right, let me go ahead and give you our first view quiz, or second, I guess, I forgot, second and third view quiz answers. All right, so uh, what do we have? Question two is B, and question three is A. Uh, B and A will be our second and third view quiz answers. Okay, and then uh, we'll continue on with, um, with methods um, on Wednesday. So we'll go ahead and end here for today, uh, and then we'll see uh, methods and continue defining uh, objects and classes. All right, we'll see you then. Have a great day.